God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Welcome to our telecast today. So delighted that you are with us, and I know it's going to be helpful. We have had this whole week, we call it Resurrection Week, and rightfully so, because it culminates in the, in the celebration on Resurrection Sunday of how Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And if there's anything the Bible tells us, and I mean especially the book of Acts, it, it, it's the resurrection is front and center. Yes, the Holy Spirit is one of the main things in, in the book of, uh, book of Acts, but then you have the resurrection of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Those are the three themes that go throughout that book. And, and uh, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And so we want to invite you today to contact us with prayer requests. We've been praying all week, laying hands on the prayer request here. And with me are, as you can see there, I think you saw them on a cutaway. There's Pastor Nathan Thurber uh, from the Toronto Celebration Church. And then Dean Morris here as well, who is our young adults, youth pastor. And, and both of, all of us are involved together in world missions. You know, I was just writing a letter to our partners, Nathan. And um, some of you may have received that by the time you watch this telecast. And I put a little postscriptum at the letter. I said, uh, pray for our co-workers in different parts of the world. They, they face dangers. And I was thinking of, of Jacob who's in Ethiopia. I was thinking of you who were just in Tanzania. I was thinking of Daniel in Indonesia. And I just written this, and then I left my, my uh, you know, where I was writing, my desk, and uh, I went and did something, whatever, maybe had lunch or something, and then I came back, and you had just sent me an email, or maybe I just saw it, that Daniel, our co-worker in Indonesia, he had just been in an earthquake. I mean, right in the city where he was setting up for a campaign, we will be there later on this year, and I think, Dean, you're gonna be with me there, um, an earthquake. So he had to, they had to evacuate the, the hotels. I thought, well, I just asked uh, our people to pray and it was brought home to me. So make a comment about that, Nathan, about all the different tentacles of our work, what we're doing right now, but also how we need to pray for the people that really are committed to Jesus. Not everybody we meet in these countries is committed to Jesus. We, we meet corruption, we meet a lot of things that make us discouraged, but we do meet some people who, who are committed to Christ. So talk about that for a and moment. And the challenges that they face. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, I mean, there's a reason why not everyone's doing what you do. There are many challenges that we face natural and otherwise. And uh, we're working you know, in Ethiopia, and uh, if you followed any international news, president has recently stepped down and there's riots across the country. That, that poses some challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, you mentioned earthquakes. It's the largest Muslim country. And so we face challenges there. Uh, you face natural challenges. I was recently in Tanzania and uh, well, my driver was driving 165 kilometers an hour in the dark, in the rain, on a telephone. So, you know, I'm praying and believing I got angels. But anyhow, you, you I'm mean he back. Was, he was talking on the phone or texting and then... I'm not texting, talking. Talking and yeah. driving. So, and you're screeching in the corners. You face obstacles, but it, it's actually serious. But, but that's the least, you know. But, but to be honest with you, um, and sometimes you're at the mercy of that. See, I mean, I've screamed at drivers, stop. I do, I'm going to die one day, but not today. <laughs> you know, but I yeah, know but, what that's feeling is like. But you're in a like. time crunch too. But, but yeah. the reality is it's, it's uh, you know, people, there are other the people, the coworkers that we work with in those countries, they live in those situations with the earthquakes, with the, with the riots. And so I don't think that we're so special in the sense that we no, go no, and, no, you know, no. we're there to work with them. Uh, because there are believers ac around the world that we're partnering with to do these events yeah. who, who face this every day. Uh, we're privileged to live here in North America. Uh, uh, I'm glad I get to see other parts of it, but it, the other parts of the world have a lot of challenges that we don't face. Now, we do face them when we go, absolutely, but, but, but people are living in that. People need our help, especially believers that we're yeah. partnering with. I think our producer may have been showing some pictures there because we've received pictures uh, even when you were in Tanzania, we have a couple of pictures there, and then we have pictures from uh, Daniel, who just sending is coming in, even as uh, uh, you know today, yesterday, uh, from Indonesia where he is, and then these uh, riots in Ethiopia, 
and we didn't count on that. You, you know, you said to me kind of tongue in cheek, well, you don't pick the easy cities, Peter. No, well, no. I wasn't There's no, purposely. They've, they've shut down the email, they've shut down the internet. We can only contact yeah. Jacob, our, our worker there right now, by phone. And even then, half the time, it's hard to get through to him. It's a very volatile situation. So, this is how we work, you see. And you can see some of our festivals maybe there, even the ones we've had in Ethiopia before. And uh, I, I know when there's a crisis in a country, yes, it can turn very negative against the gospel, but it can also be an opportunity. And we're going forward with this. So thank you for everyone who is a partner with us. As I've been saying this week, I, I am just not satisfied to have a telecast where we pro not provide a nice half hour of spiritual information and some worship and some prayer. I mean, that's nice, and there's a lot of programs who do that, and, and, and that's, that's good as far as it goes. For us, that's not enough. We have to mobilize people. It's about the gospel. It's about Jesus saying, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This gospel must first be preached to all nations. And so we're doing that around the world, and, and it comes out of us when we speak because it, it's, it's there. We, we have experienced it. We're talking about our life. But we also, and, and Nathan, you were such a big part in this, and we released this 44-page this page pamphlet, gospel pamphlet, uh, The Enlightenment, the, the Global Quest for God, and, and to open people's eyes about who God is, what Jesus has done for us. And, and we want you to order Why don't you take a moment, Dean, and, and just talk into the camera about how people can become involved with the gospel by using this little tool that I think it, it, it's, good, it's a good tool, it's a sharp tool. Absolutely. Well, this Enlightenment book is so simple to use. In fact, when you read through it, you'll see that there are some pictures there that help explain it, but even more important than that, it makes the gospel so simple and it's about giving life. It's about experiencing the life of Jesus without any condemnation. And I was actually just uh, preaching at a church in Cleveland not too long ago, and we took these Enlightenment books, and when we were there, there was a gentleman who came up to me, and he did a lot of street ministry in Cleveland, and he would talk to people from all different walks of life. And when he flipped through this book, he said that he could not believe how simple the gospel was. But even more than that, he said that he could not believe that it was all about presenting grace and giving life without any condemnation. And so this really will help you in reaching those close to you with Jesus. And so essentially it's easy. You can go ahead and grab maybe a, you grab a 25 pack and, and pass it out. Or maybe you want to grab the 100 pack. And with the 100 pack, you can pass it out. You know, whether you go to a coffee shop and leave an enlightenment book, or maybe you take public transportation, it's easy to just leave an enlightenment book. No matter where you go in your sphere of influence, you can make a difference with this book here. And you can do that by ordering, by following the directions you see right there on the screen. Thank you for doing that. I, I'm interested in what you said that, that you noticed that it's without condemnation. You know, Nathan, you've been with me in 60 campaigns, so you know that once the campaign meeting is all over, we talk about things and often there's a little moments of sharing and teaching going on. And so on the plane, when you were with me for the first time overseas and then Jacob was there and somebody else was there as well, being for the first time a pastor from Norway, I made the statement. I said, now you've been with me here in Burma. Every night I said, you've seen thousands of people respond to salvation. I mean, you've seen that massive crowd praying, calling on the name of Jesus. And I said, now, did you notice, I said to you, that all this response happened without one hint of condemnation from me? I didn't have to threaten the audience. I didn't have to condemn them. I didn't have to make them feel bad. They just heard the gospel and responded. And, and you guys all looked at me like, yeah, come to think about it, <laughs> it was without that. See, <laughs> you see, the gospel of God's grace is, is so powerful. It's so beautiful and it attracts people. Well, I, I'm the one that pre is preaching today. First service here was, uh, first program was Nathan who gave the keynote address. And then yesterday it was Dean. Today it's my turn. So I'm going to take my Bible and go over there to that. So I'm going to turn to you, Nathan, and you can pass it to me. I'm kind of going around here uh, trying to be incognito as I arrive over there. So uh, turn it to me in a moment. Absolutely. Well, in, in fact, at the end of when Pastor Peter is done speaking, we're going to have an opportunity to pray. And we're going to pray with you. And we're going to pray for you to receive help in your life. That help in many different areas. But so stay tuned after Pastor Peter is done preaching. I see him ready. So I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Peter. Over to you, sir. 
Well, I want to talk to you today about resurrection openings. You know, the, the tomb was opened. And I get the theme from there, but there were also other things that Jesus opened by his resurrection. You know, the resurrection is mentioned 104 times in the Bible. And, and when Jesus rose, contrary to, for example, Lazarus who came back fr from the dead, Jesus rose to endless life. Something happened. And, and we cannot just ignore history. It must be explained. I mean, how... How did a few disciples, arguably from a backside part of the world, Galilee, not known for uh, greatness in the academic realm, how did they turn the world upside down? Well, the resurrection is the only viable explanation. And, and then we have the resurrection of miracles that we see today. Then we have our personal evidence. To me, the personal evidence is very subjective. I don't expect you to be too much impressed by it. It's just my personal evidence. Because the Bible says that, that my spirit, or God's spirit, bears witness with my spirit, and my spirit with God's spirit, that, that I'm born of God, that Jesus is real. But, but then you have all the evidences of people whose lives have been changed. So uh, let me share with you five resurrection openings. Number one, the resurrected Jesus opened the tombs. You know, every religion, uh, tombs are important. Death, shrines, they all play a vital role in all religions. I can think of Buddha's tomb or the ancient e Egyptian Valley of the Kings with so many kings of pyramids, the, the Taj Mahal, which is a memorial shrine. Well, the gospel is signified by an empty tomb. Something significant happened. That's even why we have Sunday worship. People say, why don't we worship on Saturday? Well, we can read about it in the book of Acts and in 1 Corinthians that they call the first day of the week the Lord's Day. And nothing against the seventh day. That was a good day. But, but the first day was the Lord's day. Well, the Lord who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine changing the calendar. Those first disciples, they were Jewish people. No Jewish person would think of changing the calendar unless a momentous event had orchestrated that change. And that event was that the tomb had opened. And then number two, the resurrected Jesus opened the scriptures. You, you know, you can read the Bible and read and read and read and, and be like the Ethiopian eunuch referred to in the book of Acts. And they said, do you know what you read? He said, I don't understand it. But, but Jesus opens up to make the scriptures come alive. Let me read to you from the Gospel of Luke. This is a post-resurrection scripture. So Jesus has been risen. And it says, he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory? And beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures concerning uh, the things concerning himself. So Jesus just opened up the scriptures to them. A few verses later, you have the same repeated, and this time he's talking to a different group. He said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. You know, the Bible can be a strange book. For example, you take the, the story about Isaac and Abraham and how Abraham was, you know, considering to... To, to sacrifice his son, and then God provided another way. And it, it, you may just say, well, that's, that's an interesting story. But Jesus opens up the Scripture. So we say, oh, Isaac was a, was a foreshadowing of Jesus. He, he was laid on the altar of sacrifice, just like Jesus went to the cross. But then on the third day, <laughs> Abraham said to his servants, we're going to be back again. And just like, like you heard yesterday, Dean Morris was saying, on the third day, Jesus rose again. So, so suddenly, whoa, Isaac is a picture of Jesus. Joseph 
He suffered innocently. He was thrown in the pit. But then he was raised up and became what we call today the prime minister of Egypt. Well, that's, that's a nice story, fascinating. Maybe you can turn it into a movie. But with the hindsight of Jesus and the resurrection, we say, oh, Joseph, he's a picture of Jesus. Jesus didn't deserve to die, but he was thrown into not a pit. He, was, he went to Hades. He went to the kingdom of death to defeat hell and death and sin. And he's been raised up and his name is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. See, see how the scriptures come alive. I'm talking about these Old Testament examples. Take the prophet Jonah. You know the story, he was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish. It doesn't say whale, by the way, but uh, it was a great fish. You say, well, it makes make sense. It's a weird story. Well, it's a picture of Jesus. Jesus, uh, he died. He was buried for three days, and then he rose again. We could talk about the sacrifice of Abel. We could talk about Noah's ark. We could talk about the lamb that you find depicted. Uh, for example, in Egypt, the lamb was slain there for the Passover. We can talk about in the book of Joshua, this this revelation of someone who is the captain of the host of the Lord. You could talk about the fourth man in the fiery furnace. You could talk about uh, Psalm 23, the, the great shepherd. You could talk about the, 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 the Song of Solomon, about the lover and the bridegroom and all these beautiful romantic stories. And, and you could say, well, these are nice. Hey, they, they're great, great stories. That's interesting reading. You know, it's part of literature. It's part of world literature. But Jesus opens it up and you say, whoa. This is, this is a picture of Jesus. And now I understand more who God is to me and what Jesus has done for me. So he opened the scriptures. The resurrected Jesus opened the grave, or you could say that that holding zone called Hades, or in our Bible is often translated hell. You know, it says like this. This is an interesting scripture here, Matthew 27. I'll read it to you. Uh, Behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. This is speaking of when Jesus died. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. So there were some who actually um, just, just appeared in Jerusalem. But what, what was this? I call it, it was like a payday advance, you know. You don't go to these places where they give you a payday advance because they charge exorbitant rates. But let me use it as an illustration that, that because of Jesus' victory over hell and death, you could say the last Adam unraveling all the junk that was passed on to humanity because of the first Adam. Uh, because of Jesus, the last Adam, his victory, he went and preached to those who were in Hades. He preached to the spirits in prison, Simon Peter writes in his epistle. He, he descended into Hades for us, the apostle Paul says uh, in the book of Ephesians. Uh, well, well, what happened in Jerusalem when Jesus rose, and the Bible says there were some of those who had died in the Old Testament that rose again. It was a foreshadowing to the ultimate victory. Hell and Hades are defeated. Sin is defeated. <laughs> In the book of Revelation, Jesus said, it says about Jesus, he, he, he laid his right hand on John and he said to John, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm he who lives and was dead and I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades, or that word could also be hell, and of death. Oh, I tell you, Jesus' victory is enormous. We maybe have minimized it. We need to give it a, a second look. And then let me hasten here. Number four, the resurrected Jesus opened heaven. It says in the previous verse that the veil of the temple was rent in the Holy of Holies, which was a place there where the Jewish people worshiped. They had the holy place and then the, the, the Holy of Holies and, and people couldn't enter in there. Uh, because they had to go through a certain purification. Only the high priest, after very extensive purification, could enter there. You see, uh, previously, they only knew of, of, of God coming to man. God would, would come and reveal himself. But by Jesus and his resurrection, the way for us to come to God, 
We, we can access God anytime. It's not just that we're just waiting, oh, I need a visitation. I need you to come and touch me, God. No, we have access all the time. Hebrews 4, 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Jesus passed through the heavens after his resurrection and made a way for every one of us. So you have access to God. You don't have to wait for God in God's timing to come and visit you. No, you have free access to the Father. Jesus opened that way. Sometimes, sadly, I hear Christians talk about a closed heaven and heaven is like brass. I don't know what in the world they're talking about. Jesus opened heaven once and for all, meaning we have access to God. And then number five, the resurrected Jesus opened the door to a new life. Not, not just the occasional, you know, God touching you, or God giving you some crumbs of, of, of the bread of life or a little bit just to kind of give you a lift and a boost. No, a whole new life. Romans 6 tells us, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also. I wish we could just underline that. Likewise, you also. In other words, this has relevance to you. It's not just a, some statement about the resurrection. It's about us. You reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, that's the, that's the whole revelation of the Bible, you know, that, that, that because he lives, we live also, and we reckon ourselves alive to God. You know, Galatians 2.20 is one of my favorite verses. It says that, that I have been crucified with Christ, uh, and nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And I want to invite you this Resurrection Week. Maybe you're watching this right on Resurrection Sunday. Would you open your heart? to the living Jesus and said, Jesus, come and live in me. Here's what Jesus said in the book of Revelation. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. I've been talking about openings, the, an open heaven. The tomb was open. The scriptures were open. The access to God was open. Are you going to be closed? Or are you going to say, I'm going to open the door to my life. And I'm going to go back to the set in a moment. I'm going to turn it again to Nathan right now. Nathan, I'm going to ask you for what I've just said. If you would invite people to receive Christ right now and lead in a prayer, and I'm going to ask you to open your heart as Nathan talks to you right now. Thank you, Pastor Peter. I remember when I said yes to Jesus and the, the love that filled my heart and my, my understanding. And so I'm going to invite you to do that right now with me. Maybe you're like those people in Luke 24 who said I, one time, I didn't understand the scriptures, but when Jesus shows up, it, it comes alive. And so let's say yes. Would you say yes to Jesus right now with me? Just pray with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you took my sin, you took my wrongdoing. I believe you're alive today. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. Come into my life. Make me new. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Pastor Peter. Well, I snuck back here while Nathan was praying, and I want to just add to what he said and what he prayed there. Let me know that you prayed right now. I, I would be delighted, but not for that reason. Uh, although that, if you want to make me happy, that of course is nice, but more than that, I want to seed something into your life. This booklet, uh, Salvation God's Gift to You, and we'll put, make sure uh, to, to, to we put in, please remind me to tell our staff, because I'm just saying this right now, we don't want to disappoint anybody. We put the enlightenment track there as well, so you get both of these. You really get a, a tremendous revelation of the gospel, and it's free. You can also text me regarding this. And uh, you see all the information that text me. Use my text phone, but make sure you leave your contact information so I can send the material back to you. Uh, I talked a little bit longer there than I had allotted myself, but Dean, 
I'm going to ask you right now, let's pray here. We've been taking these prayer requests every day, and new prayer requests are coming. And Nathan, if you take these, I'm going to give you here some, some more here, and I'm going to take some myself. And there's all kinds of problems. People have all kinds of problems. And how do we dare say that we're going to pray? Because Jesus is alive. Dean, I want you to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you speak to the mountains that stand in the way. Uh, sometimes people have depression and discouragement. It's like a mountain. You, you command it to go in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Absolutely. Jesus, we thank you that in your name that these prayer requests will be answered. So Jesus, we speak to every sickness. We declare it healed. We speak to every financial issue. We call it fixed. Lord, we thank you that your name is bigger than any mountain that anybody is facing. And so we speak to that thing and we say that it has to go. It has to be healed. It has to be free because of your name, Jesus. We thank you what only you can do, and you're moving in these people's lives, and you're oh, answering these prayer requests. Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, let, let me pick up on that. If you had physical need in your life, you say, thank you to Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for touching me right now. And then you may want to just begin to do what you couldn't do before. You may want to, some, some sicknesses are not of that nature. They could be an internal thing, and you just lift your hand and thank God. But if there's something, maybe your, your knee, or your, your, your ear you couldn't hear, take off the hearing apparatus. Take, take off that. See what God has done for you. And then when it comes to financial needs, be open. I'm talking about the key word, I guess, is open today. God will give you wisdom. Maybe you made some mistakes. Maybe you, you, the reason you're in the problem you're in is because you made some, pardon me, I'm going to be blood, some stupid mistakes. Well, Christ has become wisdom to us. And so say, Lord, I open my heart. They've been praying, and maybe the answer to the prayer is that God will give you the wisdom uh, to, to move in a whole new direction. Who knows? Maybe ask someone to forgive you. Maybe there was something that's holding you back. Open your heart and let God touch you right now. And I'm, I'm down to the last few uh, seconds here. I just want to say again, we must go beyond merely sharing information. I want to mobilize you to get involved with the gospel. Mark over there in the production room, put it one more time on the screen there on the bottom about the enlightenment tract. I hope everybody will order at least 50 of them. Have them ready as much as we reach people around the world and we need your help. I hope many have called today to say, after what Nathan shared earlier, I want to be a partner. I want to be a VIP, a monthly partner in this global gospel advance. But let's, let's reach out in our own country. We want to see one million people in the, in the West, not just in those other countries, to receive this track this year. And so go ahead and order it. It will be a blessing. And remember, Jesus is alive. You're loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.